So you have over 200,000 plays on your profile. So how did you go from zero to 200,000? Or what are some things, I know you said consistency, but what are some things that are embedded in consistency that, that you think work for you as part of your process? Is it how you name your beats? Is it how you tag them? Upload times? What is it for you? Mm, I mean, I use these apps that kind of show you, or I, I'm pretty sure YouTube even has something where they show you where when when to post or when your followers are the most active and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that helped out a lot with post times and stuff because I live in the in Sweden, so it's like six hours ahead. So I have to compensate for that because the majority of my audience is in the US, so I have to like play by the US time kind of. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And what was the other thing you said? Um, I was just wondering if you, if there's any specific thing that you do with naming conventions or even any oh, yeah, naming marketing um, that you've uh, done. Yeah, I mean, I always post on Instagram, uh, post on YouTube at the same time, post the same times, and I try to post beats every week. Uh, uh, but what else? Like, I mean, just hmm, I don't really know anything specific like that. But how many beats a week are you uploading? Uh, now it's been very low because we've been moving new house and everything. So it's been very stressful, but I try to at least keep three beats every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's my goal and I don't beat myself up for not meeting them, but at least I make beats. Uh, so yeah. Are you making beats with any specific artists in mind or are you trying to hop into any specific trends or do you just put something together and then decide what kind of type beat, um, it should be tagged under after uh, very no i i think i just started making music and I, I i make the stuff i like and if i feel like it fits some kind of artist uh, i'll upload it but usually i go with like don toliver juice world type of beats mm -hmm. uh, so it's really easy to like label them uh, but i guess yeah i think pictures helps a lot like i've noticed that like with some type of pictures they work mm -hmm. so others don't so like yeah naming I don't know how much of a impact it has, but it feels like it has some kind of impact at least. So I guess the branding. <laughs> yeah, I think um, the one thing that I will say from my perspective, um, as far as naming conventions go, is for when it comes to things like playlisting, um, especially those who are submitting to playlist opportunities, it makes it a lot easier to filter through for what we're looking for when we could really search the name or the genre that, that we're trying to playlist for. Um, oh, yeah. And that's how we find a lot of a lot of your guys' tracks out there is just by looking up specific names, um, and and uh, going through the genre filters. So, uh, if anybody needed that as a tip, I hope that <laughs> works for you. But um, I always make the joke about you know making sure you're tagging the appropriate artist because some people just want yeah. to in the search. And I may be looking for a very specific type of pop beat, but then you've gone and tagged every single rapper under the sun. And <laughs> it's, it's just yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. No, I, I tend to use, just tag the ones I, I need and just move on like that. Keep yeah, it simple. Always fill in your metadata. Metadata is a major key.